Hey everyone, thanks for joining our monthly NVIDIA VMware Community Webinar Series. Um, so we're going to give everyone a few more minutes to jump on. Um, in the meantime, please fill out our poll question, um, and then in about four minutes we'll start our actual presentation. Thank you. Uh, to avoid, so it's going to be great hearing from him. Just really quickly, um, I wanted to talk about why we're seeing um, education as such a, as such a big market um, for when it comes to graphics accelerated virtual desktops and applications. And, and really it comes down to the trends that we're seeing across this industry. Many of you who are at universities will have seen these. Um, students are moving farther and farther away from just physical infrastructure. Computer labs are no longer interesting. Um, Non-interactive projectors and whiteboards, they, it doesn't keep them inter entertained and it really doesn't um, help them you know, expand their imagination as they're going through this coursework. Uh, CDs, DVDs are a thing of the past. Everything is downloaded or streamed. Um, it's very easy to access. Um, and really they're looking to find ways that they became, can become more mobile so that they can learn how they want. Um, so over the next 10 years, we expect to see a lot of change in the technology uh, that goes into universities. Um, you guys have been at the lead of many changes that we've seen. Um, so things like virtual and augmented reality, we expect to be a big, um, a big area of growth. Um, things like touch surfaces, interactive uh, projectors, boards, and programs. Um, being able to stream all of the things they're learning, um, not just necessarily lectures and things like that, but also the applications that they need to interact with these lectures. Uh, tablets, mobile devices, these are going to become so important and already are um, you know, really taking over how we do education. Um, and then of course adaptive learning, being able to learn when and how they want. And virtual desktops um, and applications have really helped this. Um, and we're going to hear a little bit from Michael specifically how it helped um, with it at USC at their engineering school. Um, so why are these becoming so important? So the first thing um, that we see from a lot of universities is about the cost and complexity for managing physical infrastructure. It's more than just managing the computer systems themselves, it's managing the buildings, it's hiring the security, it's ensuring that students have 24 access to that infrastructure. So being able to simplify that in a virtual environment empowers IT to be able to offer a better service. Um, we also see technology becoming more and more important in students' decisions on where they go to school. Um, sure, you know, the reputation and, and their, their prospects after school are going to be important, but more and more things like where they can access Wi-Fi, what devices they can use, and how they can um, actually participate in their classes is becoming a deciding factor. Um, so helping your school, um, you know, stay at the front of that technology trend and, and offer the most um, up-to-date uh, solutions is going to be important. And then, of course, extending your reach. Uh, we know that the world today is getting um, broader. Most schools are looking to increase the number of students or already having to increase the number of students they have. Um, and being able to offer courses, whether it's just simply distance learning programs or actual online education programs, is going to be something that we think is going to be important over the next couple of years. So we all see these challenges. We all know it's things that we want to solve. So let's hear from somebody who has started to go down this path of exploring how virtual desktops uh, can explore their environment. So Michael, um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Amanda. And thank you, Carol, for the introductions. Um, good morning and good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are, happy Valentine's Day. Thanks for joining this webinar about giving students 
anyway access with NVIDIA Grid uh, Virtual Computer Lab. Now, so we can all agree that uh, rapid uh, re evolutions of technology is changing the way we learn, work, and educate. It is clear that mobility is changing the education environment. Today, students and educators heavily rely on mobile devices that allow anywhere, anytime access to application and data. Good news is VDI solutions have come a long way in recent years allowing for rapid deployment, massive scaling, and high satisfaction user experiences. Now in this webinar, I will discuss the uh, critical challenges that uh, GPU enable VDI solves in education. I will also explain the Turbis School of Engineering at USC is making the move, why USC is making the move to, um, to GPU enable VDI, how we support different user groups in VDI, share our lesson learned along the way and touch on our next steps. During these webinars, uh, feel free to submit questions and uh, comments using the chat function. Amanda and a few folks right here will respond to as many questions as time allow at the end of the presentations. Uh, USC Engineering, school, uh, the Turbis School Engineering is a century old institution made up of uh, eight academic departments. The school has a broad academic programs. As you can see that uh, we have at this point in time a number of bachelor's, master, and PhD programs. Uh, the school has 2,700 undergrad and 5,800 or so graduate students. It's a mix of uh, masters and PhDs. Uh, that is also supported by uh, 320 or so faculty members. We are in the last five years or so, we're seeing 5% annual growth in our master student population. And this is a challenge. Challenge in a way, good challenge and opportunity, I would say. This growth rate puts stress on classroom space, physical computing labs, and our IT support. At present, we have 27 computer labs of varying sizes, ranging from 16 to 36 seats in each lab. Some open 24 by 7. Due to our implementation of NVIDIA Great uh, Virtual Computer Labs, we repurposed three physical labs for other users over the past two years. So there is a reduction of computer labs because of virtual computing. And uh, consequent, consequently, we also reduced the number of client computing devices designated for physical computer labs, smaller IT footprints, so to speak. The school offers approximately 13 hundred or so class sections in a given semester. A large percentage of these class sections are taught with instructional software. That said, the school IT is faced with supporting 220 plus instructional software titles. Now this is supported by 10 FTEs, um, um, mostly to, uh, most of the 80 student workers have primary responsibility in end user and instructional lab support. The remaining FTE, which is about 10 or so, support backend infrastructure and all digital communication and information services. Higher expectation for IT services than those enrolled five years ago. In an effort to groom so support backend infrastructure, USC with higher expectation for IT services than those enrolled five years ago. In an effort to groom our students with uh, for successful career in engineering and prepare them to leverage advanced technology to address global challenges. USC Viterbi School continue to mount classes with graphic intensive 3D design and analytic applications. These applications require ever increasing processing power to run with acceptable performance. With increasing enrollment in classes that require graphically intensive and computationally intensive application, class scheduling was becoming a big challenge. There is always limited classroom space with limited hardware in each location. Building computer labs is expensive, as we all know, as is managing and supporting dedicated computer in each facility to handle diverse instructional computing needs. So the bottom line here is, it is a big challenge for IT at USC Viterbi to keep pace with the constantly changing demands of the school academic programs, faculty, and students. For those of you in education, 
I'm sure you These are really important, such an important piece. To, to address this. In our solutions involve we tend to GPU enable v, uh, uh, VDI for our solutions. We deploy a comprehensive VDI using VMware Horizon and VDI Grid Technology and VDI uh, GPU cards. Uh, Dell Enterprise Server Storage Network and uh, Security Solution with goes to address these challenges. We select Dell, VMware, and NVIDIA based on the collaborative solution support and the ability to, to come together to make GPU enable VDI solutions that can support the most demanding workloads. I will go into more details with each uh, provider offered um, uh, solution in our deep, uh, VDI department. So what does GPU enable VDI offer to our user communities? So here in our student perspective, it empowers them to study with cutting edge, formant graphic reach application anywhere, anytime, on any device. It gives them mobility. There's no need for them to come to a physical computer, physical computing labs. It gives them device independent. I think that's an important note. They do not, they don't need workstation class computer to access graphic reach application. Now it offers them flexible computing. It gets them to retain full control of own device for most functions and use appropriate virtual de desktop for specific applications. It allows them to realize enhanced productivity, collaboration, and innovation so students can gather anywhere, anytime. The, this uh, VDI also improve. Yes? Have you seen this change when and how students access their applications? I know, I, I, you know this was a big change for them. Um, as you went through the pilot program, did, did you see their actual activity change? Um, yes, we do see that. Uh, so quite often, they will call for having a place to meet rather than calling for computer classroom. So in other words, that uh, they care for is a place that they can just come together, congregate, work together, because they have, can have access. Classroom will repurpose that. Now, certain classrooms that with computer, we have two front rows which are converted into just desk space rather than rows of um, additional two rows of computers. So that is kind of indication that our student population are bringing their own uh, personal device. All they care about is access to the software and data so they can get their work done somewhere. In VDI, we can provide sensor data storage and do regular backup for them. So. I would use this word that some of our faculty said, no more excuses for my dog eats my homework. So <laughs> also, <laughs> laptop hard drive crash, or oh, I lost my laptop. So none of those excuses exist with this VDI per se. Now in our faculty perspective, when it comes to, to, to uh, VDI, it's uh, GPU enhanced VDI in particular, it affords them the same flexibility and mobility as the student. Now faculty can prepare the teaching material anywhere, anytime on any device as well. Now it supports, uh, it enables rapid software deployment. With VDI, we, we enable rapid software deployment to many desk, uh, virtual desktop. This empowers our faculty the choice to teach with latest versions of software. So it free also uh, our faculty from having to troubleshoot issues associated with, associated with local installation application on their students' own computer. So our faculty can get to focus on teaching, not on technologies. Uh, VDI enable classroom to transform to customizable yes. learning space. Yes, you have some you, questions? You talked talk to faculty about this. You had them in your pilot, and they were, they were involved very much from the beginning. And they gave you some incredible feedback, which is not typical from faculty. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. And as a matter of fact, a faculty buy-in is one of the things that I want to point out. Faculty buy-in is very important for success of any VDI deployment, and also for, for, for also to secure funding to make VDI deployment possible. So, um, and in our pilot, I'll, I'll touch on that later on about what we did uh, in the pilot phase, and um, that shows uh, students were actually at classes things for for our school administration. And it, so, they actually the, took that as real cost savings, correct, Michael? Like that wasn't just a, a soft cost savings. They really looked at this saying we can reduce computer labs, we can enable better flexibility, 
and it helped with some of the funding for this type of project. Correct, and reduce, reduce, and also we can actually put a stop to to having to create an additional computer labs. So, so put a stop to additional computer labs is one thing, but now it's reducing existing ones. So that's another form that uh, is going on. So we were re reducing from 30 to 27 uh, in the last two years. And so the trend there, is. Yeah, the trend is going down, which is great. And was there additional cost savings to the students? Were they, you know, did it change the devices they could buy? Um, or, you know, did you see any um, benefit on that side? Well, the, ben the, the beauty is this, that uh, because all the computation when it comes to virtual desktop is done on the server side. So uh, student devices, they could use a, a four years old and five years old laptop and they still be able to get, uh, have the pretty much the, the similar user experience as one that has. So, so did this the VDI's um, systems happen overnight for us at the Turby? Uh, the answer really is no. We've we gone through a, a period of uh, a proof, proof of concept uh, to early pilot and then phase one, phase two. We do it multiple, uh, approach it in a multiple phase uh, away. So in the proof of concept, I think this is very impo important for those who are considering. In this case, uh, we started with doing proof of concept back in late 2013 uh, with the idea at the times to bring in with GPU, uh, to, to, with GPU, not just VDI alone. So we, get, we were getting our arms around VDI and grid technology in general at the time, so learning about what it means to us. We focused at that time also that our existing IT infrastructure that, that will, we will need to be able to, to support a scalable VDI implementation. So we look at our system storage, our network, uh, security design, and identity and access management. We have thousands of students that we provision access. So if we are having to administer student account independently of so-called um, uh, to create accounts for those students, it will be quite a, a labor intensive and, uh, and uh, overheads that the uh, administration of So, 14, and the following year, introduction of this. G thing is, I think, you know, other departments within the university now come to you sort of as the, the leader in understanding this when they're starting to look at this type of rollout, right? Correct. So, um, uh, there's definitely uh, some uh, uh, units of uh, NVIDIA grid K2 cards. Now we started with three tiers of virtual desktop. If you look at the 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 um, this slide, the lower tiers is we call it is the K220Q virtual GPU profile. That's we call it the light graphic loads. And then the second one, the the 240Q is the medium, and the highest end is 260Q. Now each of these, let's look at the light graphic VM. We that's how we populate it applications in those uh, different tiers of virtual desktop. All right, let's move on to phase two. Now we set on two tiers of virtual desktop on tier, phase two. And th in this phase two, we introduced M6, Tesla M60 card, which I had mentioned earlier. And I think this, at this point, the key things that I want to highlight here is that the introduction of M60 enable us to double our user density per server. So you could see that uh, even with two gigabyte of, uh, of video frame buffer, um, we were at one point in phase one, we only can support with eight VM. In this case, we're able to support 16 VM per server. All right. And here, Michael, what you guys did is when you introduced the M60s, it wasn't like you threw away the old infrastructure, you repurposed it so that um, your, your users, you know, the lower side of your users could still have that acceleration. Absolutely. And this you can see that even in our situations, that even to, um, in our implementation, we, have, we are using virtual GP, uh, GPU even, um, all, almost all applications will benefit from, from some form of uh, graphic accelerations. So, so in this case, in the, even for 512 megabyte of uh, uh, video frame buffer, yep. you're correct. And just so, out of so we retain the K2 cut. Yeah, exactly. And out of curiosity, is this uh, Windows 7 for the most part on all of these, or are you looking at? Windows I should point 7? out. Yeah. So 
In phase one, we are, we are phase one, we're using Windows 7, and phase two, uh, which is uh, starting in fall to 18, uh, 2016, we are Windows 10. So this is, okay. we are running Windows 10 at this point in time. Okay, very cool. So we're going next slide, and in phase two, what, um, what did we introduce? We introduced NVIDIA Tesla M60. I mentioned earlier, and also the Horizon 7 and V0 6.5. Great software, there's a version upgrade to Grid 2.0. Uh, that is needed to run with M60. And then with the Grid K2 cards, we can still run on the, older, uh, the earlier version of Grid uh, 1.0, or 1.1X, or 1.X version of the software. The key thing that uh, I need to highlight, I want to highlight here is um, with Grid 2.0 and F60, we're able to, to bring in, uh, and Horizon 7, we're able to bring in uh, Blast Extreme as a remote display protocol. And this is uh, bringing additional benefits for our end user because uh, this particular protocol is um, uh, it, it cut down in terms of uh, latency and it gives a user uh, a, a greater sense of a, a more responsive user interface with the, uh, uh, with the VDI session. So, that's an important point to, to highlight. Let's move on to our K2 cards. This allows us to, uh, to essentially pump up the kind of, uh, make this system more responsive in, in some way. In the more, more, I was, let me repeat this. It makes the VDI sessions and the user experience uh, more present. I mean, in, in the sense that uh, the, the session, the, all the <laughs> name them here, uh, Stratosphere UX, I think I should mention that this is very important for us to, to monitor our user experience. We do that on, uh, using Liquid Wear Lab Stratosphere UX products. Pernic data is something that uh, we do for software-based so uh, storage accelerations. Um, and I will explain why we do that later on. Uh, trans, um, trans micro, the only thing that uh, I should point out right here is once they authenticate themselves uh, through the single sign-on, we then authorize them and then uh, and provide do some form of entitlement management. They are authorized and prioritized to VM based on the class enrollment. If you did not sign up for specific classes supported on VDI, you have no access. Class schedule matter too because um, uh, in this case, we in terms of class scheduling, is that um, um, how I put it this way. Well, some classes use class software available exclusively only on the VDI platform, and this will require, uh, will need special attention. Students on this, of those classes, physical computer lab. Storage, what, what are you using to help unify that? Is, 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 is that Pernix, or is there another solution that you guys look at? Okay, so in the back end, so as uh, with Pernix data, our uh, stand storage network to get at the target on the, on the physical drive. Application use, um, um, what kind of uh, usage profile? Are they CPU intensive? Are they memory intensive? Are they I.O. intensive? Are they in, uh, graphic intensive? So you can, you can see some of these applications clearly. Uh, for those of you um, are familiar with Siemens and, and NX and SolidWorks, um, these are 3D uh, solid monitoring products. Um, and they are graphic intensive, so you can see that uh, the average graphic intensity on the, uh, the, the column second to the right, it will indicate a pretty high number over on that realm. So, so this is kind of uh, helping us to see where we want to put the application on the so-called our two tiers, uh, uh, phase two uh, uh, virtual desktop. Tier one more, you know, um, has a more video frame buffer versus the, the second tier, which is uh, less. So another thing that's of uh, um, interest to some folks is uh, user login time and user how much, who is using what and how long they, were, they, they log in. So this, this login report, interestingly, in, in our environment, some students will just say to the faculty um, that uh, they had a hard time logging in, they couldn't, they didn't, uh, this video doesn't work for them. Um, that's not true because uh, from this report we can see that um, have they ever even once logged in. So, um, so this, 
this is actually will tell uh, will keep everybody honest in some way. So this is an important report for us uh, to to look at. Next, um, I would just share with you some. Um, what we have learned through this journey that uh, we implement our VDI um, um, systems. So things that, I, that I, I cannot stress enough is this uh, get the right type of people involved early in the, even in the proof of concept and in the pilot phase. Now we involve our system backend, our backend infrastructure folks. They are good at uh, network storage, design, uh, network, and security. Uh, we involve uh, people that who are in the front end as well because uh, this is going to be a shift in terms of how we're going to support our end user, involve our faculty, our students, and also our school administration because ultimately they're going to look at this and say, will they fund these projects? So, and it's no longer a project. We call this is a program right now that we're calling because this is a multi-year approach that we're taking. Now we conduct a pilot that's through the scale. Don't try a pilot that's only a few user. Have it, had at it a few classes, and um, and get the early adopters to try it out. Uh, these people look at it as a um, a VDI uh, deployment as an enhancement to what they're doing. We're not taking away what they already have. So it is an, an enhancement, and and if with that perspective, um, early phase they are pretty, I would say, forbearing with, with things that we have to learn and tweak to, to go along the way. And getting to, to know our users and use cases, I cannot stress enough about understanding homework assignment. To, if, this, if let's say a, a class that's involved uh, using um, a SOLIDWORKS, so if the homework assignment does not involve tens of thousands or a million objects, solid objects, there's no reason you, you tune your VMs to, to charge a last to the and reach our existing solution out there. Um, for our case at Viterbi School, we are leveraging our existing infrastructure, so, so we take a different pathway on that. Virtualization has needs and consideration. Don't forget that. Uh, things are, with a lot of things, all the components that are uh, interestingly fit with the high, with the newer version of Horizons, and that enable additional. You've implemented certain policies for your students. Um, so that if they're not logged, you know, if they log into their VM and then leave it for a couple of hours, it shuts off. Like there's all sorts Correct. of things that you have to do on that optimization. Yep, I will be happy to answer those specific questions later on. It is true, um, and uh, if I dive deep on that, then to, uh, in either sessions, we, um, if we live on, it will be, we time you out at 60 minutes, and if you disconnect it uh, here at this class schedule, here is that uh, really because it takes